by far the best upgrade you can make is an ashtray modification. Stock DSLRs have what's known as a low pass filter and that sits right in front of your camera sensor. It effectively reduces red eye in your photos but unfortunately it shares a common wavelength with hydrogen alpha. That's the most predominant emission in the night sky. You have two main options, a naked sensor modification and a full spectrum one. A naked sensor modification is the cheapest route and simply requires removing the low pass filter. There's a couple drawbacks to this approach. First, your camera sensor will be directly exposed to dust. And secondly, you will lose infinity focus with a lot of lenses. That's because you've taken a piece of glass out of an optical train. On a budget, a tech savvy individual can make this modification at zero cost. And in the future, you could always install a glass filter in place of the low pass that you took out. A full spectrum is just that. The low pass filter is replaced with a piece of glass with more efficient astro capabilities. You will regain infinity focus as normal with the increase in HA sensitivity. Again, if you're a tech savvy individual, you can purchase that replacement glass and install it yourself. If that scares you, alternatively, you could send your camera to a professional. It's a bit costly, but here are the two that I recommend. Spencer's Photo, if you're in the United States, they do work for NASA, and Beta Planetarium if you're in the UK. Both are awesome companies. A second upgrade would be a finder bracket, and that'll set on your hot shoe of your camera. As silly as this may sound to you, you might be using a lot of focal lengths on camera lenses and that sort of thing, where you can't quite find the object you're looking for, and this will give you a lot of options. It's not something to laugh at, it's, it's actually very useful. So it's something you might want to consider. A third upgrade might be a cooling fan. They say, well, why would I need that? Well, the main advantage a CCD has over a DSLR is that it can regulate the temperature of the sensor. And once you get up comfortably around three minutes plus on your exposure times, you'll start gaining a lot of hot pixels and the noise levels just totally increase on the camera. So if you're dead set on a DSLR and you don't want to switch to CCD and you're progressing to a point where you're exposing for long periods of time, you will need a cooling fan. At some point, every astrophotographer goes camera only. And if you know about orientation landscape and vertical you'll know how much of an aggravation that can be an L bracket can totally solve that problem for you so look into getting one of those why risk battery life when you can buy an AC adapter you might think well, why not just get a battery grip well a battery grip adds a lot of weight to your camera whereas an AC adapter reduces it there are those who argue that an AC adapter will increase the heat of the camera. That's simply just not true. There's been a lot of tests that have proven otherwise. If you follow Jeff Lucas, you can clearly see in his test that it doesn't increase the camera's temperature. You do not want to lose a long night's nice imaging session because you run out of battery power. So this is a great upgrade. An inner velometer as common sense as that may seem, is something that a lot of people ignore. If you shoot in manual, you'll realize that you have a 30 second limit. And that's just not long enough for a lot of deep sky objects. You're going to need an inner velometer. And not only that, but having to put your hands on the camera physically will increase vibration, especially on budget mounts. So being able to do that wirelessly or with a corded inner velometer, that just makes life so much easier. 
You're going to lose a lot of shots by putting your hands on the camera, I assure you. Number nine is definitely software. If you're using Canon, Backyard EOS is awesome. If you don't mind having a laptop in the field while you're shooting, you can do a lot of things and control a lot of options through your camera using this software. I highly recommend it. It's amazing and there's a free trial, so it doesn't cost you a dime to try it out. Definitely check it out. My 10th and final upgrade will be Rubilith. You buy a sheet of this and cover your live view screen with it. And the reason for that is it allows you to maintain the highest brightness level of your LCD screen without staring at it and losing your night vision because it's masked in red. Now, you know from experience, focusing on a star can be difficult depending on the magnitude. And if you lower your LCD brightness, it can make it even more difficult. You can maintain the highest level of LCD brightness and still maintain your night vision using Rubilith over the top of your LCD screen. So that's a really cool upgrade and it's something cheap you can do. That concludes my 10 ways to improve a DSLR camera for astrophotography. There's many more ways like solar filters and better memory cards and that sort of thing. So in the comments, feel free to add any kind of idea you have or your opinion of the best astrophotography modifications you can make for a DSLR or upgrades. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that it was useful to somebody. And as always, I wish you nothing but clear skies. Thank you.